Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Reeves from JR Architecture. I'm an architect, author and Vectorworks and Twin Motion specialist. And today I'm going to be sharing with you um, a little video on a new exciting development for Mac users uh, based on external graphics cards. Now with the latest release of the Mac OS High Sierra update, um, we are now able to plug in external GPUs. And this is fantastic for users like me, who I actually run my practice off a MacBook Pro, because uh, I'm out and about doing lots of vectorwits and twin motion training quite frequently. And basically what I find is, uh, when I'm back in the office, I plug that into two 4K bank screens, which are fantastic, really, really nice quality screens. But, you know, the graphics card built into the Mac is only a 460 Radeon 460. It's a four gigabyte graphics card. So while it's decent when you're on the road, um, you know, powering the four screens with high resolution graphics is not ideal. So what I recently did was took the plunge and purchased a Razer Core X graphics enclosure. And this is an external GPU, which you can plug in via Thunderbolt to your Mac Book Pro. And what I've done is also purchased a AMD Radeon Vega 64 graphics card. And if you know anything about graphics cards, you'll know that that's one of the best graphics cards you can get. It's actually the top of the range one that features in the iMac Pro at the moment. So, you know, what I'm looking for here is to see what kind of performance boost I can gain from plugging in this external graphics card. And so far, I have to say, I'm really chuffed because I'm running twin motion um, in a very sort of good level of quality here. And I'm just kind of able to move around really nice and smoothly. And you can see the beauty of Twin Motion has always been that, you know, essentially you can kind of just drag and drop and replace some materials, change some qualities about it, potentially even sort of change the reflectance and color, and also adjust the lighting in real time. And this, you know, I have to say is working really well. So when my clients um, now come into the office, if I've got a design that I'm working on i might be able to show them some different interior finishes quite rapidly and all of this in real time and this is very very exciting so i'm just going to have a look at the levels of quality now this scene i'm looking at here is the demonstration scene i'm going to go into my preferences and you can see i'm just on medium level quality at the moment so i'm going to crank the quality up to high see if we can see a bit of a difference well yeah immediately see a really nice difference there to the quality level. Um, you can see the lighting is so much more realistic, the shadows are much nicer, and things like the materials and the reflections are really, really crisp and really nice. Uh, looks like the anti-aliasing is, is much nicer as well. So I think, you know, what a fantastic improvement. And, you know, the great thing is with my Vega 64 graphics card, my little MacBook Pro is virtually as powerful as an iMac Pro. Uh, without the price tag i hasten to add so you know for those of you looking for portability and you know amazing graphics when you're back in the office um the razor core x is a very very nice solution there are other uh, graphics enclosures on the on the market but the razor core x is one that i did a bit of research on and i like the look of it uh, also it's a great price and it has you know fairly basic features in that you literally plug it in it works it works straight out of the box and, um, you know, there's only really one other feature, which is it can charge your MacBook Pro while it's running. So that's fine. That's all I really needed it for. I've got USB connectors and those kind of things. And you can see really, really nice level of graphics. And what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to go into something called BIM Motion. And this is essentially a full screen mode. Uh, here we can see full screen mode. And it is quite tricky to control with the keyboard. So maybe I'm going to slow that down. You can see I'm still able to control the different times of the day. Beautiful, absolutely stunning real-time graphics here. And at any time, if I want to, I can take a snapshot. So let's kind of pan around to get a really nice view. That's lovely. Yep, pretty happy with that. Let's take a snapshot. And basically that will pause for a second or two. You, you see it pause and it will have rendered in real time. So another really nice feature here is I can just sort of scroll through accurate shadow studies of different days and times of the year. So if this was a real project, I'd be able to show the client exactly what the sun was doing during those times. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So I'm just gonna click the escape key. That will take me out of the bin motion, back into twin motion. So let's go and add a few more materials. I just wanna show you a little bit more how easy this is. 
essentially I can just drag and drop. I can change the reflectivity, the scale, really nice. And if I click more, I can easily go to rotation. Let's go back a level over here and let's just rescale that down a little bit. That's pretty nice. And we'll boost up the reflectivity a little bit more as well. It's not a very reflective material to be honest, so it's not a great example. Let's go and choose something a little more reflective, maybe some wood. There we go. You can see very nice reflective material that can be adjusted quite nicely in real time. And let's again just scale that round. All of this can be done more accurately with numbers if I prefer, just by typing into the dialogues. And um, one quite nice thing for moving elements, you can even put some uh, direction on. So you can kind of give, give things the appearance of uh, movement. So this is great for things like rivers or, you know, things where things are, textures are actually moving. Okay, so let's kind of move to a little bit of a different point in the model. Uh, this is kind of a nice little spot here. Let's sort of spin around the view to look back at this chap here. So one thing I really love about Twinmotion is just the instant ability to drag and drop some library elements into the scene. And you can see I can essentially drag these in, really easy to move and position and rotate them round. And you see every single time you drag a different person, or should we say the same person in, you actually get a slightly different looking character. So that's actually quite good. When you're doing a big scene, um, you'll see that you can basically give them different presets, so different clothing, and also you can kind of do, you know, some interesting things, um, make them move around and give them different poses. I think we'll keep him, uh, keep him speaking there rather than the bad dad dancing he was doing a moment ago. So let's go back to the groups. This time, this is also a nice feature. You can basically drag in uh, groups of people and you'll notice over in the object manager, those come in as a group. And if you do want to, you can actually select the individuals from that group, move them around, or let's get rid of that kid altogether. Okay, so you can see we've got quite a busy little scene out inside. Let's crank up the quality to one more level and see how it copes with this. Um, this is something I could never do with the onboard graphics. So if I go into quality, um, let's click high. All of these can be sort of tweaked individually if you like. Let's click high and you can see the quality now even better than before and still pretty smooth. Now let's check out the frame rates we're getting. So if you click statistics and look at the frame rate, you'll be able to sort of monitor your frame rate and see where you are. Um, it's giving me a bit of a thumbs down at the moment. It's telling me ideally I'd probably crank up the, the frame rate or the, reduce the quality. But you can see for me, to be honest, if I was showing a client this, I think it's absolutely fine in terms of quality. You know, we're still at 17 frames a second, which isn't far off full sort of motion graphics. Um, but, you know, really nice. Still got the ability to change those times. Um, one thing you have to bear in mind is to say, because my screen recording software is running in the background, that will be eating up a fair bit of the graphics processing. So I would expect it to be even smoother and a bit quicker without that software running in the background. If I click quality setup though, let's go back to suggested high. You'll see this should move up a little bit in terms of the screen. Yeah, we're back into the green now, so it's pretty happy with that. You know, all day long I can move around my model. Now it's quite a complicated model. You'll see if we move outside, one of the other really lovely things with Twinmotion is the ability to look at the landscape. So I'm gonna go back a couple of pegs to landscape. Um, let's go to trees and let's just drag in a few more. Wow, that's quite a large tree. Let's drag in something a little bit smaller maybe. Um, maybe let's do this and let's scale that right down. It's quite nice and if we click the cursor, I can just hold shift down and essentially copy. And if I want to, I can even copy a number of duplicates. So you can see how easy this is. Really, really nice external animation. Okay, so let's drag in um, a bit more into our scene. That's a massive rock, so let's reduce that in size. In fact, we'll get rid of that one. I think we'll drag in something a little bit smaller. Uh, let's scale that down. Go to scale. There we go. Let's reduce that down. So basically, when we click here, we've got scale, move, and rotate. And we've got some shortcuts here that you can learn. So you've got four for move, 
five for rotate, six for scale. So that's a really nice way to kind of rapidly move through those different elements. Okay. So let's see if we can just add a little bit more here. Let's put some poppies in and I can just sort of drag these into the scene and again, scale them up and down. That's lovely. But one of the things I really love about Twin Motion is the ability to sculpt the landscape. So we're going to end off the video with a few video clips that I've prepared on previous projects. And if you've had a look at some of my other videos on the channel, you might have seen the tutorials related to some of these. Um, these are really just uh, quick tests at this stage, but they do give a bit of an impression about some of the power of Twin Motion. And uh, you know, you can see I'm just having a bit of a muck about trying out some of the effects. Um, some of the landscaping and things like the lighting. On this one, really nice, uh, trying out the weather effect as well. Um, and that's one of the beauties with Twin Motion. Um, you can make the weather change really rapidly, so you can go through rain, snow, overcast skies, and as well as sort of changing the time, um, you can change the seasons as well. So all the trees and the plants have a response during the seasons, and that's a really nice angle to be able to give some atmosphere to your models um, and maybe show the client you know how it might be to live in that dwelling during all times of the year. Um, here we can see the night view. It's really easy to adjust the light so they automatically come on when it gets dark as well. Um, Twin Motion also features a number of sketchy filters so you can render with some nice sketchy styles as you can see here and this can be quite a nice idea when you're just presenting early ideas to the client. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, I'm certainly very pleased with my new Razer Core X and AMD Vega 64 graphics card running off my MacBook Pro. I can't wait to use it more on the new version of Twin Motion 2019 that's been released in the last few days. So I'll be back with some more videos soon and thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.